Hi guys, so welcome back. Today we are gonna be testing out a bunch of brand new makeup. I just placed an order last week and I got it this weekend and I also did get a couple things in PR. So we are doing a full face of high-end first impressions. I know everything's closed, but if any of you guys were looking into splurging a little online, I get to be the guinea pig and test things out before you purchase them so I can let you know what I think is worth the money or not. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Definitely grab a snack and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you hit the bell. That way you're notified every time I upload, which is every Sunday. Tuesday and Thursday. And without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so we are starting off with eye primer today. I actually have this one from Hourglass. I got a couple things from Hourglass in PR and I'm very excited about it. So this is their Veil Eye Primer. It just looks like this. I really love Hourglass packaging. It is super sleek, very beautiful. I'm gonna just take this and apply it all over my lid. Ooh, it's kind of like a skin tone color. So. Ooh, a little bit goes a long way. I'm just gonna use my finger to blend this out. I probably used way too much. Feels good, feels like the Urban Decay Primer Potion. It's not a really thick consistency, it's just like really creamy. Today for eyeshadows, I'm gonna use the Artist Couture Supreme Nudes Palette. This looks so pretty. It's actually a lot prettier in person versus in pictures and online, so I'm very excited about it. This is what the packaging looks like. Again, very sleek. Just like absolutely stunning. And then when you open it up, you get a nice mirror and then you get all of your colors right here. So very soft, sultry, warm tones, which I love. So I'm gonna start off with this color right here, which is exposed. I'm gonna just run that all over my lid just to lightly set that base. Next up, I'm gonna go in with this shade right here, which is called Nudist. It's like a really beautiful, soft peach. And I'm just gonna run that right in my crease. I think today I wanna do a, wow, that's really pigmented. It's actually a little bit darker than what I thought it was gonna be versus in the pan. Ooh, it's really rich. But I think today I wanna do a halo smoky eye. So that is what we're doing. Wow, very buttery. First impression, like this is gorgeous. Formula is a little bit like the Anastasia formula, which I really like. It's super creamy. Ooh, so pretty. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually build that color up a little bit. So I'm gonna take a little bit more and just build it up. Next up, I'm gonna take this shade right here, which is more of like a deeper brown. I'm gonna use a different fluffy brush just to kind of fluff that shade on the lid a little bit, keeping it really soft. A little bit in the crease. I love these tones. They're really soft and like not too over the top. I feel like a lot of warm tone palettes nowadays are just a lot of bright oranges and like reds, which I love, but I love a good like soft warm tone palette, which I don't feel like there's that many palettes like this nowadays. I mean, there probably is, but <laughs> you know what I mean. A lot of them are super intense, but this is, this is looking good. I always get a little nervous doing halo smoky eyes, but we're gonna just go with it. I am gonna take this shade right here, which is aesthetic. It's like a more of like a rich red brown. And I'm gonna start kind of working that on the outer crease a little bit and kind of working it on the lid as well with a different brush. This one's a Sigma E25 blending brush. Doesn't really have to be super perfect because I am gonna go in with a lid shade. This is kind of just for me like the easiest way to begin like the halo smoky eye process. I'm gonna use a darker brown, but I like to start off with lighter browns and then just gradually work my way up because I'm not the best still to this day. When it comes to halo smoky eyes, I struggle a lot. I've tried different techniques and I still struggle no matter what technique I do. I'm gonna go into the shade, which is like a dark chocolate brown. It's called Mink. It's a really beautiful, like, cool tone brown. I'm gonna kind of start taking that on the outer crease. Oh, this brush is too big. Hold on. There we go. This one's from Luxie. I got it in a boxy charm. By the way, I get a lot of questions about why I don't use BoxyCharm anymore, or like why I don't make videos on it. I actually canceled my subscription like last year. I was just kind of over all the changes that they made. I wasn't loving it anymore. And 
even though they did send me the box like for free like i'd never got paid from them or anything to like review on my channel but i genuinely loved boxycharm and i paid for it myself i personally canceled my subscription and i told them like they don't have to send me the box anymore or whatever just because like i didn't love the changes and like i personally would never recommend something to you guys unless i'm like absolutely in love with it and like i would pay for it with my own money so that's why i canceled it i just wasn't like loving the box anymore too many changes and the price went up it didn't go up by much but i just wasn't wasn't really feeling it anymore so that is why all right i know this is looking crazy bear with me i'm gonna take this shade down here which is eccentric it's like a really light mustard shade and i'm gonna apply that in my crease just to very lightly blend out the edges Whenever you're working with darker colors or like when you do a halo smoky eye, the key is just taking your time and blending. It's like the longest process, but it usually, sometimes, typically comes together in the end. So I'm gonna go into the shade Lavish and I'm gonna apply that right in the center of my lid. Ooh, very pigmented, very pretty. We're gonna blend out the edges as well. I'm kind of just placing the shade down first. It's not a chunky formula too, like just dipping your finger, it feels really smooth and creamy. Just take a small little brush and just kind of blend out the edges. This one is from Royal Inlang Nickel and I just dipped a little bit of the darker brown into it. And you wanna just take the edges of that shadow and kind of just like fluff it outwards. Does it look like a halo smoky eye? A little bit. Is it perfect? No, but it's fine. It's a little bit like green, like a green gold. It's really, really pretty. I kind of want to add a little something extra. I'm going to take the shade Opulence right here, which is more of like a coppery bronze shade. And just to like intensify this a little bit more, make it pop a little bit. Let's add that right in the center as well. Yeah, that's cute. Okay, I think the lashes are also gonna really bring this together. I think my looks, I always say this, but they always look really scary and crazy when I first start to do the makeup and then somehow, like, it, I feel like, I mean, sometimes, not always, but it always ends up just kind of working itself out. You just really have to take your time blending because I'm not an expert with eyeshadow. I feel like sometimes with certain looks, I'm not the best when it comes to eyeshadow, but if you just take your time, you can do it. Like if I can do it, you can, I promise. Okay, so I am gonna do falsies. I actually have the glue down already. I'm just gonna wait for them to dry. You guys know how I do. I'm using the Lily Lashes. These are the Faux Mink multi-dimensional lashes and these are in the style Randy. So I'll pop a picture of them right here of what they look like, but they're really pretty. I've used them before. Anyways, let's start off with the skin. I'm going to start off with the Smashbox Photo Finish Vitamin Glow Primer with vitamins B, C, and E. I actually saw this and I was like, okay, I need it because I love Smashbox primers. I've talked about them and raved about them on my channel before. They work really well with my skin and then the packaging on this is really, really beautiful, of course. Comes with a pump and it says wear alone or apply one to two plumps, plumps, pumps before makeup for a hydrated, healthy glow. So it doesn't say anything about making your makeup last. I think it's really more so just like a nice hydrating primer. Oh, it smells like very citrusy. Feels really, really good. Feels like a gel moisturizer, which that's like my favorite. I'm doing a little bit more. That's like my favorite kind of consistency when it comes to a primer. I'm just gonna put this on all over. Oh, it says here, it revitalizes and brightens your skin. It's a refreshing water gel primer. I knew it felt like a gel moisturizer. So it awakens skin for a healthy glow. Makes makeup go on smoothly and effortlessly and it's for all skin types. For foundation today, I actually have two different ones. I'm gonna use both of them just depending on which shade matches better. So I have this one from Lorac. It's the Pro Soft Focus Longwear Foundation, which looks like this. I haven't used the rock products in quite some time so i kind of want to use this but then i ordered this from natasha denona it's the foundation x it's a full coverage fruit complex foundation what are the claims oh it's just a full coverage foundation duh it says it right there i believe this does have a matte finish i'm gonna see if the color matches me this one's in the color 31w light medium mm, it's very yellowy what else is new and then i'm gonna do the Lorac one and kind of see the Lorac one I have in the shade 9 medium. This was sent to me in PR, so I don't know if this color is gonna match. 
they're both very yellowy they just have like a little bit of a different undertone i don't know should we just do both sides like one side one foundation one side the other kind of just test it out i have two beauty sponges here i'm gonna do one side with the natasha denona and the other side with the Lorac one let's just see you know it's a first impression so let's go with it i'm gonna use my dose of color sponge on this side and then on the other side i'm gonna use my color pop sponge this color is definitely a little too dark i feel like if i was self tanned it would work let's zoom in a little bit so you can see my skin oh and let's apply these lashes actually i almost forgot Oh, I love these lashes with this look. Okay, back to the foundation. Yeah, this Natasha Denona foundation is a little bit too dark. I don't know if you can really tell. I can tell in person, but what do I always say? We're gonna make it work. So I'm gonna build it up a little bit because it says it's full coverage. I didn't use that much foundation on this side. And I'll do a little wear test today and I'll let you guys know how it looks. I'm gonna cover that gorgeous little the zit that I have above my lip, which it looks like it covered it up really well. This color is off, and I know my ears are a lot lighter than my face. I'm gonna add bronzer later on. It looks really pretty though. This does have really good coverage. It looks like skin though. Okay, then on the other side, let's blend this out. I'm gonna use my ColourPop sponge, which honestly is a really good dupe for the Dose of Colors one. I mean, they look very similar. I'm gonna blend this out. Yeah, both of these foundations are not my color. Oh my gosh. This is one of the lightest colors that they sent me. I think it's actually the lightest. So let's just look past the color because I both of these actually look really pretty on the skin. Very yellow. And this is like a little orangey, but it looks really good as far as coverage. I think it's really pretty. Very soft. Okay, so I'm gonna look up some claims on the foundation. It is a refreshing feel with soft focus finish, long wear performance with a silk-like texture, lightweight with buildable coverage. I actually think the Lorac one has a little bit better coverage and it looks a little bit softer on the skin. The Natasha Denona is definitely more of like a skin-like foundation, but it also does have really great coverage. I just feel like the Lorac one is a little bit more upgraded coverage than the Natasha Denona side, but okay. Let's continue on with concealer and hopefully I can uh, make this work. I'm gonna use the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. This one's in the shade Oat, and this is looking a little too light for me right now. I'm so bad at picking up my foundation shade and concealer shade. Everybody's like, how do you do it? I'm like, I don't. But I think it's actually good that I got a light shade just because this is way too dark. I'm gonna start off with that. I also do have a Lorac concealer, but I don't know if this is gonna be too dark, but we'll see. I might have to just mix the two because this is a little too light. So again, I'm using my Dose of Color sponge on my right side, your left, and then on the other side, I'm gonna use the ColourPop sponge for the concealer as well. Definitely does have really good coverage. From what I know, this concealer is full coverage. A lot of people really like it. I actually have tried Hourglass foundations before and I really like them. The concealer looks nice. It's just obviously way too light for me. I'm gonna put this like on my T-zone just to kind of balance it out. You can see it's very full coverage. I probably didn't need to use that much. On the other side, I'm gonna use the Lorac concealer and let's just test it out and see. And by the way, I usually never do half of my face with one product, half of my face with the other, but for today's sake, I just have so much new makeup that I wanted to kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison and see what's good, what's not, but yeah, this is not typical. But we're just having fun, you know? We're playing with makeup. So anyways, on the other side, I'm gonna use the Lorac Pro Soft Focus Concealer, and this one is in the shade 5.5 Light. <gasps> this is also gonna be too light. So I'm not too sure why, but the Lorac concealer is looking really dry and patchy on this side. I, I don't know what, you know, there's nothing different that I did. The only thing I can think of is maybe it's not really pairing well with the eye cream that I used. I use the Pharmacy Cheer Up eye cream currently, but I mean, on the other side, the Hourglass concealer is looking, I think, really good. I mean, clearly I have fine lines and everything, but it's not looking dry and patchy like the Lorac side. So, so far right now, I'm liking the Hourglass concealer a little bit more. I think it's looking a little bit better. So I'm gonna just use a little bit of that on the other side just to kind of not make it look patchy. I actually really like the Hourglass Concealer. It is super, super creamy, and it really melts into the skin very nicely. Even though this is obviously very light for me, I think it is very doable. 
I probably need to go up like one or two shades, but I think it's pretty. So then I have the Fenty Cream Bronzers. I'm super excited about these. I love their original like powder bronzer. It's like one of my favorites and actually it is my favorite high-end bronzer. This one is in Butta Biscuit 02. It's like a really nice warm shade. It's not too orangey though, which I really like. So I'm going to use an LA Girl 104 brush, which is like a little duo fiber brush. And I'm going to just dip into the bronzer. Oh wow, this is actually a lot more cool tone than what it looks like in the pan. As you can see, I think I'm gonna need to get a darker shade. I don't really love the cool toneness of it. I have the shade here, which is 03 Macchiato, which I think I'm gonna use instead. I'm gonna like dip into this as well because it's a little bit more warm than Butter Biscuit. See, Butter Biscuit's a little bit more ashy compared to this color, but it's definitely coming off a lot more gray than what I expected. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of the shade macchiato just to make it a little bit more warm i typically like more of a warm cream bronzer i know that's like definitely personal preference because some people say you should use cool tones to contour so far it's really creamy i just feel like the color is a little too ashy for me oh yeah see zero three is a little bit better oh yeah much better it's definitely more like brown and like more bronzy which is what I go for. Oh, hey, I just realized that Fenty, dang it, it comes with a brush and I didn't use it. This is the 125 face brush that is meant, I believe, for these products. Let's build it up with a brush. See, this kind of fits perfectly right in there. Formula is great. I just don't like this color on my skin tone. It's a little bit too gray for me, but if you're looking for a more like cool tone bronzer with a little bit of warmth in it, you'll like the shade zero two Butta Biscuit. I like saying that, Butta Biscuit. But if you want something a little bit more brown, I would go with the shade zero three if you're like my skin tone or maybe even a little bit tanner, this could definitely work because I'm not tipping my brush in too aggressively just because obviously with cream products, you gotta be careful. We also have cream blushes, which is very exciting. Look how cute these are. They're so little. They're really, really tiny compared to their bronzers just a little side comparison they're actually much smaller than what i thought so just a little fyi i have two shades here they actually sent these to me which i'm so grateful for every time i get fenty pr i'm like so we got petal poppin and fuego flush both of these look gorgeous very bright but pretty nonetheless so i'm gonna mix the two okay so i'm gonna dip into the pinky color and i'm gonna do a little bit of the orange as well kind of just mixing the two then I'm gonna start stippling that in. Wow, it gives you a really light wash of color. I mean, I'm doing a little bit just because, again, these are creams and you wanna be careful, especially with like brighter shades. It gives you a really pretty wash of color. I'm just literally doing this. Do a little bit on the nose. I love blush on the nose. I think it looks really pretty. Oh, these are really pretty. They're really like wearable, even though they look a little bright in the pan. They're really wearable. They're just really small. So I think it comes down to like, if you want to spend a lot of money on like something so tiny. Okay. Now we can go ahead and set all of the creams. To be honest, I think everything is looking a lot more normal now versus when I first applied everything. It's definitely coming together slowly but surely. So I'm gonna use the Hourglass Translucent Setting Powder. This is their Veil Powder. This is new to me. I don't believe that this is like brand new on the market, but I've never used this before. And this was sent to me in PR and I was like, ooh, it looks so pretty. So we're gonna test it out. Wow, this is like bougie. I'm gonna use my sponge just to kind of press that in and then I'll use a brush to blend it out a little bit more. They actually sent over this little brush too, which I'm going to use to kind of dust a little bit more of the powder. I'm also going to take this and kind of just set right below the bronzer. And then my T-zone as well. My cheeks actually don't feel very tacky, even though I use cream products, which is really nice. It feels really comfortable. I almost feel like I could get away without setting it. I'm going to use a little bit of my Thrive Cosmetics Sun Chaser Bronzer in the shade Raya. It's like a really beautiful brown. haven't used this actually in a little bit. And I'm going to just kind of dust that with that same hourglass brush just right on the cheeks. Just want to add a little bit more bronziness to the face. 
I'm also gonna use that down my neck a little bit, on my chest, and then on my ears as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna finish up the lower lashes. I'm gonna start off with a liner, actually. I'm gonna use the Urban Decay 24-7 liner. This one is in the shade Mildew. It's like a really nice green, which I think goes really well with this eye look, because I feel like the gold kind of meshed with the brown, and it almost looks like a green-ish, a little bit. And then I'm gonna jump back into the Supreme Nudes palette, of course, from Artist Couture. And I'm gonna take this color right here, and I'm also gonna take the brown, and I'm just gonna be running that right on the lower lash line for a little extra smoky touch. Okay, next up for highlighter, we have this one from Dominique Cosmetics. It's the Prisma Glow Palette. I haven't used this ever, but I love her eyeshadow, so I wanted to pick this up. And then I also wanna use the Anastasia and Nicole Guerrero Palette. I haven't used this in so long. So this was available back in 2017. Loved the palette, and then I ended up donating it because I thought it was limited edition. But it ended up coming back, so I repurchased it because I really did love this palette for quite some time. So we're gonna use this on this side, and then the Dominique one on the other side. Side. But I've used this before. I've used Anastasia's highlighters and they're really great. I'm going to start off with the ABH one and I'm going to take the shade Glow Getter and Daydreamer, mixing the two. These colors are very wearable and they're intense. So just something to keep in mind. I'm just going to apply that right on my cheekbones for a little pop. Today I'm going to go a little bit harder on the highlight than what I've been doing just because I'm feeling it. Then we're gonna do the Dominique Cosmetics on the other side and I'm gonna use a different brush. I'm gonna use the ABH brush. And I think, let's, first of all, let's look at this palette. So stunning. It looks like a big little stop sign. <laughs> oh wow, that's intense. It's like a really true gold. I might like it a little bit more if I was a little bit tanner, but it's pretty. I like this side more just for my skin tone, but it is gorgeous. I'm gonna actually take that golden hour shade because it's like a really gorgeous gold. I'm gonna take that right in the inner corners to open the eyes up a little bit. It's perfect, it's like the perfect gold. Okay, and then for lips, I have a new lip liner. I don't think I've ever tried these before. These are from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Lip Cheat Reshape and Resize Lip Liner, and this one's in the shade Iconic Nude. Ooh, that is creamy, and that color is really pretty. Then I'm gonna go in with the Artist Couture Lipstick in the shade Saucy Gal. It's like a really nice, kind of orangey brown. Doesn't really, oh, this smells good. Doesn't really match with the lip liner, but it's fine. Oh, actually, it looks nice with the lip liner. Mmm, that feels so good. It's so creamy. I'm gonna do a little gloss because I'm like, I'm a gloss kind of girl. So this is the Dominique Cosmetics gloss in the shade Creamer, and I love her gloss formula. I've never tried this one in particular, but the packaging is different than her lemonade glosses. But it's so pretty. It smells so good. It's not super opaque. It's not as pigmented as I thought it was gonna be, but it does give the lips a really light little gloss. So we have two setting sprays here. <laughs> a lot of like double products, but this I purchased myself, and this is the Tarte Maracuja Miracle Mist. It's like one of those aerosol can sprays. I haven't used a setting spray like this in a while. Typically, most setting sprays aren't in this kind of packaging. And then I got this, also sent to me in PR, which is the Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray from Hourglass, which Oh, this looks so beautiful. It's kind of like a can as well. So I think I want to use this one actually. I'm going to shake it up. And then let's do the tart one. I like the spritzer on this more because then you don't have to constantly be like, psh, 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 psh. you know what I mean? Okay, I look wet right now. <laughs> All right guys, so this is the completed look. Overall, I really love this look. I'm feeling very summery, very bronzed, and I love a lot of the products that I used in today's video. So I'm gonna just start off with the two products that I really wasn't the biggest fan of. Starting off with the Dominique Cosmetics Gloss. Surprisingly, I don't love this. This is different than her Lemonade Lip Gloss formula. It's not as glossy, it's not as juicy, and I feel like it's not as opaque as that formula. So this, although I really do like the smell, and I like the color, I feel like you have to build 
it up quite a bit to get even just a little bit of a glossy finish and it's not a very opaque formula as you can see like once you blend it out it kind of just like vanishes on your lips so I don't really get much gloss there so for me this is a definitely a no-go unfortunately the Lorac concealer I'm a little like on the fence with it because I really did like the way that it looked under the eyes but I noticed that once I started to let it sit for a little bit it did dry up under my eyes and it looked pretty patchy hopefully you were able to see that on camera I'm gonna keep trying it out though with different eye creams maybe I won't use an eye cream or something one day to see how it looks maybe it just doesn't work well with what I used in particular but for now I'm on the fence with it but if I had to compare this with the hourglass one I would definitely go with the hourglass concealer I think it's a little bit more creamier it's super full coverage and it just really melts into the skin a lot better than the Lorac one just like my first impression honestly besides these two products everything else I really loved I didn't really have a hard time with any of the products I mean obviously the foundations were crazy at first but I feel like in the end it really did come together I mean you can see it is a little bit too dark for me still it looks really good I'm very glowy right now and I'm honestly really loving it I think the Natasha Denona foundation is really pretty it's very like skin like but you still get really great coverage the Lorac foundation is also really pretty on the skin as you can see let me know which side you think looks better I feel like this side definitely looks a lot more smooth than this side I look that's actually looking a little splotchy on this side now that I look at it I do like the cream products from Venti. I think that they are really nice I definitely don't really love the shade 02 on my skin tone it's a little bit too ashy for me I prefer 03 I think that one is great it's very warm but it's not too warm and muddy so this one I do like and I also really like the cream blushes I think these are super pretty especially these two colors mixed I think they give you the most beautiful flush on the cheeks the only thing is they are very small so I think it comes down to like do you want to spend a lot of money on something that is this tiny it's definitely personal preference I mean like I said in comparison to the bronzer they're very small so that's like the only downside of them I wish they were a little bit bigger the eyeshadow palette is absolutely stunning I love this look I created I love like the soft glam like it's just absolutely beautiful it actually now that I look at it it kind of reminds me of soft glam from Anastasia minus a couple of the colors it is very similar to that so I feel like if you have that you don't really need this but the formula of this I've never tried artist couture eyeshadows and it was really easy to work with and I really enjoyed it so super creamy also I love the Nicole Guerrero palette I forgot how good this is this is amazing I think I like it more than the Dominique cosmetics one it's a little bit smoother I think on the cheeks and it just went on a little bit better but this is pretty nonetheless but I definitely would choose this one if I had to choose between these two I would go with Nicole Guerrero and ABH palette for sure love the lip combo like I said minus the gloss I think the lipstick and the liner is a beautiful like perfect nude beige combo it's amazing I really also liked the eye primer from hourglass the primer from Smashbox was really good and then the setting sprays are really nice as well I typically don't really like a really light mist but these were nice I think I like the Tarte spritzer a little bit more it's just like a continuous spray on the face and it feels really good I feel like the it almost made me look a little bit more dewy than earlier, but I like it. I will let you guys know how everything worked throughout the day. I'll insert like a voiceover segment right here. All right, guys. So this is my makeup after about like almost 11 hours actually of wearing it because I was filming pretty early today and it's like 1040 when I checked in with you guys. So I actually haven't touched up since earlier. I touched up my face once because I was super oily around like two hours into wearing the makeup. So I feel like these products definitely need a good mattifying setting spray and a good mattifying primer. I wasn't even really outside that much. I went to the grocery store. I had a mask on and that was it, but I wasn't like sweating or anything and it just looks very greasy heavy and cakey on the skin even the concealer looks very creasy under the eyes and it just feels like I have a ton of makeup on so I feel like I need to use these products with different primers different setting sprays because they just didn't really mesh well together also the hourglass veil powder is really nice but I feel like it's not a powder that's gonna mattify your skin or prolong your makeup so maybe something to use when I am like super dry in the winter or if you have dry skin I think you would really like it and then this is what the makeup looks like after I touched up a little bit and blotted. It still felt really heavy and just didn't really look or feel great on the skin. So I'll definitely have to keep using these products with other primers underneath. So I will keep you guys updated in future videos. So that is it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for being here and hanging out with me today. Let me know if you've tried any of these products and what your thoughts are. And also if there's any other new makeup you guys want me to test out, let me know as well. I love you guys and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye.